Um, what I'm going to do here is try to explain some stuff to you. And what I mean by that is right there, you see that? I want to go over some things and one of them is the benefits of that. That's a D5 whatever. That's the second generation of preheater Eberspacher S-bar heater that I mounted in here years ago in that nice box. And uh, I'll tell you a story about these things. I like stories. Do you like stories? I'll show you a little bit about it first. One will say, well, where do you mount the controller on these things? Well, we mount them out of the way where nobody can see them and nobody will hit them. And hopefully the sticks won't come up and bust them or whatever. On his other, on his other machine, I mounted it up in the canopy. But in this one, I mounted it right there. It's right there, the old seven-day timer. You hit her. She starts taking off. This is my own contraption here. I did this a couple of years ago for him and uh, I put the exhaust right through here so no brush can swipe off the uh, the little pipe. Everything's in front of here. We're good to go there. And uh, yeah, basically the exhaust pipe, your coolant lines Going right to the block. And she's going to fire right up. So, some of you guys will ask me, why the heck would you put one on this old version of a uh, 1980s skitter or whatever? And if I was to explain what the guys around here used to do, they used to, because it's so cold up here, they used to hook up their engines to this with coolant couplers. Well, basically hydraulic ball pioneer couplers and they'd hook them up to the engine to warm up the engine off their pickup trucks in the morning. Hey man, I can come to work at 6 a.m. A lot of these guys like to get out in the woods at 6, 7 in the winter time and go to work. So this thing will be running for 120 minutes already ahead of time. Let me shut it off. Just that easy. All right. So real simple. Got it into the thermostat housing and into the side of the block with with gate valves to shut them off in the summertime so the water ain't circulating up through there. You, guy doesn't have to do that, but I I like to. Makes it more serviceable too. But some guys will say, well, it ain't too co it ain't cold enough and to use this to have a preheater in my neck of the woods. Well, guess what? What's wrong with my color? Did my color go out? Anyway, some guys will say, well, it ain't cold enough to have that in my neck of the woods. Well, I'll tell you what we do. Once you get used to using these things, these guys will use them from, uh, I'm going to say like Thanksgiving, November, up until spring breakup up here, which is March. You never have to pull an ether can. It always starts. You don't have to worry about it, unless your batteries are shot. Um, it, you don't have to replace starters near as often. You don't have to replace alternators near as often. It's just that much easier on the engine. The engine will last, man, I, I can't tell you how long these engines. I mean, we got Ponzi's out here with 30,000 hours on them. Those machines that heats the, the, the cab, the engine, and the hydraulic fluid. There are immersion heaters in there and they got relays to switch on the heat so the guys will get there in the morning and the cabs are warm. So what do you do? You start it up and you go to work. You have to run a few things, get your hydraulics going out to the different far away places on the machine. The wear and tear that that $1,500 unit 
saves you in the long run is just incredible. Um, now he's got three skitters. This is his newest one. The other ones were built in the early 70s and I found a place to put them and you guys dig way back in my videos and you can see, I think one of my first videos ever, <laughs> that was a long time ago, was putting one on his A and I tucked it in alongside the engine. You can take it out of the box and, um, and do that. But it saves so much hassle on wear and tear on your engine and to come to work every morning and not have to have a guy standing there on these particular ones you got to open the side cover unless you got ether injection reach up there turn the key on hit the button and she's running i mean and granted like i say i i train these guys or i tell them i don't train them i tell them to start running these things when it starts hitting 30 degrees outside american height because it's just, um, it's beneficial for the everything, for the engine. It's just, it's like it's 70 outside. They, the water temperature goes up to 170 degrees, so your thermostat's just about ready to open. You have heat instantly in the cab. What more do you want? You know, and it runs on a liter a day of fuel, I think. That, that you can't quote me on, but. Yeah, I just wanted to go across some of the benefits of those things. Um, I know there's skeptics out there, and, and the one thing I will say, though, about them is that the fuel, you got to make sure your fuel is good and clean for those things. The fuel intake tube is three millimeter outside diameter, so there ain't, there ain't much to get through that little tube. So up here in the north, we, what we... <clears throat> tell the guys to run them even in the summer once a month kick them on get fresh fuel to them it's no different than a carbureted engine just get fresh fuel to them and uh so when december rolls around november october you don't have problems with it and then uh about once every couple of years we got to clean them but that's really once you do it, it it's not a big deal uh it's just a miniature boiler, just like anything else. It needs a little bit of maintenance from time to time. But what it saves you in the long run is thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So in not only in mechanical stuff, but in time. You go to the job, you fire the machine. You don't sit in your truck for a half hour waiting for it. Or you don't get on the machine and ram the hell out of it trying to warm it up. It's already warm. You go to work. So if you take that two hours a day that that machine has that heater running, you get out of your pickup, slam the door. You go over there and you go, vroom. Now you go back into your pickup, get your lunch pail, carry it in there, your chainsaw or whatever, and put it in a cab with you. Guess what? You're working. So that two-hour window of, it's already warmed up. Well, let's say you'd let it warm up for a half hour on a cold, cold morning. It's already done. You're saving money every time you go to work in the cold weather, like I said. 30 degrees on down, turn it on every day. I have some guys that'll turn them on in the 40s and, and they use them every day. So, anyways. And ironically, those are the guys I never see for batteries, starters, alternators, the random stuff that the, the cold weather works on real hard on getting, uh, you know, messing up for you. So that's it. That's my little spiel on why you should have a coolant heater on your machine. Take it for what it's worth. Um, if I had my choice, I'd have one. I've actually got one somewhere stashed away. I pieced one together from all the spare parts I got, I do believe, and I want to put one on my service truck even so I can get to the woods on my old 99, the black one. I want to put one on there so when I get to the woods, I can shut the truck off, click it on, saves the fuel going into the engine, and keeps the truck warm. Because two weeks ago, I got screwed with it out in the shed. I think I told you guys. Excuse me, it was 20 below, and that 
I had to drag it out of the shop over there. It's got glow plugs that work. It's got good batteries. It just was damn cold and it didn't want it. That's the first time then since I've owned that truck. Well, number one, that I left it outside in that much cold, but that it didn't start. And uh, I was grinding the batteries, doing the typical stuff, trying to jump start. And I thought, man, I'm 100 yards from the shop. We dragged it in here and waited a half hour and fired it up. Um, but anyways, even in pickups, whatever, everything can benefit from it. I'm not promoting that brand in particular yet, but I'm just saying, I use all three, Obasto, S-Bar, and Proheat. So take it for what it's worth. If you got it, put it on, you will be happy you did. All right, thanks for watching, take care. Hope to see you on the next one. See you, bye.